Um, as you mentioned, uh, Cedric, uh, I, I truly believe that uh, cloud computing took everybody by surprise I mean, in the IT market, and software vendors were, the, were, were very taken by surprise. Uh, even, even when you, you talk, even VMware, uh, which was very present in, in, in virtualization, did took some time to understand that cloud computing was, was not just virtualizing in servers, and they, well, they did a good job, some others did, did a good job also. And in cloud computing, it's, it's really a, a question of, of services. So uh, when talking about free software, the model changes. It's not about uh, selling and installing software in the customer, uh, on the customer PCs. It's just running the software inside your, inside your own in the organization and delivering services. So then I have the feeling that the question of who owns the software has a deep mindset change because it's not the, the question is how you run the software and the differentiation is how you run the services more than uh, who owns the technology. So this mixture of open source and I will co go back, come back on open source and the, the innovation coming from that, the services and the cloud computing is really striking hard at the, at the IT market. So my belief is IT will never be the same and it's really a revolution. And you will find many, many IT people that did not recognize that yet. Now let's switch to open source, and I will go back to something that Cedric mentioned, and, and which for me is very important, about what are my expectations from open source for tomorrow's cloud. And what we, we, I see is two very different things in, in terms of benefits. The first one, and it's been for years, basically it's less cost for, for, a, for a, a commercial company. It's open source is cheaper than, than commercial software. It's, it's, it's very simplistic, I, I, I recognize that, but it, it's less cost, and by the way, it's more control. You have the source, you can adapt it, and so on. But there is a new class of open source right now. It's really new services that don't exist at all on, on commercial software. So let, let's uh, look a little at those, those two aspects. So the first one, less cost, we, we do, as I mentioned, we already do a lot in Orange. It's, it's Linux, it's, it's Jonas, it's Eclipse, and so on. So it was basically copying things that already exist as, as closed um, proprietary software and, 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 and giving back control to a big organization. And it has, um, has had a tremendous success on, on the, uh, the, the first layer. It's now happening on cloud computing. It's taking time. Uh, we have deep interest in, in OpenStack, of course, in, uh, in Zen and KVM. But the same thing, uh, understand in this way that when you look at OpenStack, Zen, or KVM, you can find very good software on the market. I'm, I would cite and quote again uh, VMware. They can do that. So it's, it's a question of doing uh, more, having more control. Uh, more control can, can also be important if you, uh, you address uh, critical markets like the, the defense market or when you, you really, for security purpose, you really want to know what's running on the, on the server because you, you don't want some backdoor or, or things like that. So, but but this, is, this is the first, let's say, for me, the first category of open source is less cost, most, more control, but basically copying things already existing from commercial uh, vendors. Can be better, can be worse, can be, but okay, too, maybe a simplistic. But the second one is really new innovative services. For most of them, so uh, let, let's start from, from the bottom. Uh, what I see, new, new programming languages they are all open source. And if you create a new language, if it's not open source, you have zero chance on the market. That's, so um, there are plenty, and I didn't quote uh, most of them, but there are plenty of new languages. Those are old ones, but, uh, that, uh, that only exist because there is a real community of open source. This is the first area where there is true innovation coming from that, and it's available for everybody. And again, it's only a programming language, so what, what you do with that uh, it's, can be very uh, different from one company to the others. I will more insist on the, the, the two first, which is first NoSQL and big data, and the second one is platform as a service. Uh, let's take NoSQL and big data. It's all, it, all, it took everybody by surprise also. And the, the story is really interesting because it did not come from software vendors, but from internet players, web players. They developed, they take whatever you want, but it can be Facebook, can be Google, can be uh, Amazon, and so on. They developed their own technology in-house in for their own needs and wide-scale needs for most of them. And then they submitted to the open source communities 
part of the code and part of the, of the technology. And then uh, when, when they did it, we see that with Hadoop, we see that with, uh, with Cloud Foundry and others, suddenly it created a, such interesting ecosystem that many uh, players um, then come around this, uh, this, this ecosystem. And many new startups also come around this, uh, this ecosystem. And by the way, uh, when you look at MapReduce or uh, Hadoop and so on, currently you cannot find a single software from a software vendor doing the same thing. It does not exist. It's really new. And, this, the, and, and for us also as, as Orange Business Services, it's a new area for, for integration, for consultancy, because doing a big data project needs a lot of integration and a lot of tools and, and, and because it's a very fragmented market. So it's, it's really a, a, an interesting new area to, to, make, to bring additional value and to make some business. And, and all those things, so we, we start to see uh, from, from some, of the, some of the vendors coming back to the NoSQL market, acquiring some companies and so on. But, but basically, it, it came from the, the web players. Platform as a service is quite the same story. Um, it's, we have some take Salesforce or some or Google, they, they did things internally, but a platform as a service is something that uh, everybody's talking about, but there is currently no market and, and nobody's using it or quite. So um, what I see, and we can debate on that, what I see is, uh, I think it last year, VMware put Cloud Foundry to, in open source and suddenly it created a real momentum on the, uh, the global ecosystem on, on platform as a service. They, even VMware, uh, their testimony is that they put Cloud Foundry on open source. It took three days for the Erlang uh, language to be ported to Cloud Foundry. Three days from the maintainer of, of this language. And, and I have came across also ActiveState, which is a well-known company around open source, who is doing a real good job, which is called Staccato. It's, I'm not sure it's the open source, right? No, no, but it's also uh, building some platform as a service uh, value on top of Cloud Foundry. So it's, to, to, just to mention it, same thing. The, the fact of putting, bringing this technology to open source really creates a, a tremendous momentum. And then now I really believe that platform as a service will create a new market and will go somewhere because we have this open source foundation. But I'm sorry, may, maybe there are not much uh, OW2 uh, open source projects here, but I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that you are um, adding a lot of open source, of uh, cloud computing uh, project to the open source. So that's, that's really the, the idea and the expectation we have. So less cost, yes, but also new services and new business on, on, on new business models. So then again, uh, just remember, uh, IT will never, never be the same as before because, because of that and because of this, this kind of revolution we're, we're seeing right now. Okay, thank you.